I let strangers on the internet plan my day here at Universal Studios. Oh boy. Hello, ma'am fam, and welcome to Universal Studios. And back to the series where we use travel reviews from sites such as Yelp and TripAdvisor to plan my day and do the best and worst things inside a park. Today's park, Universal Studios Florida, the original park here at Universal Orlando Resort. I will be doing the best and worst shows, rides, and snacks based on strangers on the internet's opinions. Wait till you see the list. Now, of course, along the way, I'll be providing some tips and tricks and thoughts as to these reviews. You may be thinking to yourself, why do a video on reviews from random people on the internet? Well, one, I've done lots of videos on what I think are the best and worst things in theme parks, coming from someone whose career is to go to theme parks, which is like still the craziest thing on the planet. Um, but two, it's kind of fun to see when you look at like Yelp and TripAdvisor what people think, because these are not always and not usually the same people that are like diehard theme park fans. And so it's kind of interesting to see when you take away the nostalgia, when you take away the like profound love that a lot of us have for these parks, what the reviews are like, because they're often very different. And it's, and it's an interesting point of view to see what it's like to come in as someone who just like casually wants to go to Universal. We have made it into the park and headed to our first destination. So again, this is gonna be all in this park, Universal Studios Florida. This is the park that has Diagon Alley, The Mummy, Simpsons, E.T. This is also the park that hosts the seasonal events at Universal. So Mardi Gras, Halloween Horror Nights, most of Christmas, not all of Christmas, is here at this park. And I love this park. I think it is so fun to go to. It's got a nostalgic vibe. I love the events. I love the live entertainment. We got the Blues Brothers right here. But we're gonna boogie on by to our first stop. First up on the itinerary today, we are gonna be dining here at Richter Burger. Now the question is, do y'all think Richter Burger was the best or the worst when it comes to reviews? If you thought it was the worst, you're right. According to the internet, Richter Burger has a rating of 2.3 out of five. Not great. It was actually tied with Cafe La Bamba, also 2.3, but there were more reviews for Richter Burger, which means Statistically, I, I, you could say it's worse. And then coming in third, or third worst, I guess, Louis Pizza. People said Richter Burger was overpriced, burgers weren't great. So we're gonna go get one and uh, see what we think. You know what, I like burgers a lot. Burgers are one of my favorite foods. So like, I, I feel like it'll be fine, but we're gonna figure it out together. Cause I've actually never had a burger from here. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Richter Burger is in the San Francisco area of the park and it's themed to earthquakes, which is, seems wild to have a, a restaurant themed to a natural disaster. Uh, but there actually used to be a ride called Earthquake right across the street. So it tied in with that theme. All right, they are super busy today. I have never seen this restaurant this busy even during peak season but there is an event this evening especially ticket events but there's a lot of youth groups and a lot of people here for that event so it's super super busy i mobile ordered before i got in they sent me to a table they had a team member uh, i waited for a moment for a team member to have one for me and then i walked over then i put in the table number into the app and now i'm just waiting for my food i will say this restaurant does have a lot of things to look at. Uh, there's a couple of Easter eggs, like right there, there's a gravestone. I just showed this for S. Andreas, which I would believe to be a nod to the San Andreas Fault. Also, when you first walk into the restaurant, there is a replica of the famous um, Agassiz statue that flew off a building um, during a 1906 very famous earthquake in San Francisco, and it landed upside down, so they replicated that. Also, I don't want to say it simulates an earthquake occasionally, but occasionally a quote, earthquake happens, and the mascot guy starts writing on his little tablet to figure out the Richter scale, and some of the team members were like, earthquake! So that's fun. Taking a look at the Richter Burger menu, they're known for burgers. Shocking, I know. They've got a, uh, the big one, which is just like a bacon cheeseburger, and then they've got a mushroom Swiss truffle burger. I went for the big one because I feel like that's probably the most commonly ordered thing. If you ever see a combo at Universal, that probably means a milkshake comes with it, but you can, don't have to get a milkshake. They also have got a grilled chicken sandwich, a plant-based burger, a salad, a couple different sides. Y'all, I gotta, I gotta sing praises for these truffle Parmesan fries because I have had those, and those are fantastic. 
music, and then just some basic drinks. So not a super exciting menu, which is why I've never eaten here, because I typically choose to eat places like the Leaky Cauldron over in Diagon Alley, which are a little more exciting, and I like the theming better, but I'm, you know what? I like Burger Digs at Islands of Adventure, so I'm going to see if it's the same. All right, my food has arrived. Again, I got the, just the classic bacon cheeseburger that comes with all the fixings, and I did add sautéed onions and mushrooms and jalapenos on there. Comes with fries. I'm excited to dig. It looks good. It looks good. I love jalapenos. I'll put those on there. I should have gotten a condiment, but I'm starving, so I'm too lazy to get up right now. The fries are great. The fries are seasoned. They're crispy. I prefer skinnier fries, like the Disney quick service fries or like McDonald's fries. But these are really good. Crispy on the outside. A lot of the reviews said the fries were bad, and I cannot agree with that. Let's try the burger. It's fine. Something on it's really salty, and I'm trying to figure out what that is. I think it might be the bacon. I just ate a piece on, it, a piece on its own, and it's salty. Also, the bottom bun is not holding up great to all the toppings I have on here. Hmm, maybe it's the onions. It's a fine quick service burger. It's a little over salted, but I, I think it's the onions. A lot of people, when I was reading their reviews, and granted, some of these are much older, so you have to take those with a grain of salt for sure, um, said that like the burgers were dry or still frozen. I didn't experience that, and it did say everything was made to order. So I feel like it's a fine quick service burger. Am I gonna go out of my way to eat this? No. Is it acceptable as food? Yes. Is it an acceptable theme park burger? I think also yes. So maybe if you've got pickier people or you're looking for something that'll please more palates, this is good. I will say it's expensive. I know theme park food is expensive in general, but I didn't even get a drink. By the time I added the onions and um, jalapenos and mushrooms, which are extra, it's a $20 burger. And it's, it's not a $20 burger. Here's the thing. Is it a fine quick service burger? Yes. Is there better, more interesting food elsewhere in the park? Also, yes. That's my biggest thing with places like Richter Burger, outside of those truffle fries, which I cannot sing highly enough about. When I'm at Universal, I would rather eat something more unique that I can't get anywhere else. So I want to go to the Leaky Cauldron or the Three Broomsticks in the Wizarding World. Over the other park, I want to go to Green Eggs and Ham. I'd, I'm probably most likely not going to grab just a plain burger. And if I am, I want it at Burger Digs because I like the theming of Jurassic Park a lot better. That's it. It was a fine burger. It's a fine standard quick service burger. My biggest issue was it did take a long time. It took like 30 minutes for me to get my burger. But one, is busier than I've ever seen it in there. And two, most importantly, the team member told me it was gonna take that long. When I went in with my mobile order, the team member said, hey, just so you know, it's gonna take 30 to 35 minutes to get your food even with a mobile order. And I said, that's fine because this is the video I'm shooting today. If I was not shooting this video, I would have said, oh, no problem. I would have canceled it and I would have gone somewhere else. So there are people in the reviews I read that were like mad at how long it took, which I understand you expect quick service food to be quick. But if they tell you it's gonna take that long and then you're still mad it takes that long, well, that's not their fault. So with that, it's time for Molly's Review Corner. Alan has found a review for me, which always makes me laugh because I, I don't read them before this happens. Alan goes and picks the one and um, they're, they're usually funny. So let's look into it. Good service, bad food. The two stars is for the friendly, helpful service, which was great, but didn't make up for the poor quality cheap meat or tired old salad. The food was dry, stale, and we couldn't finish it. Worst salad I had had anywhere around Universal. Burgers were unappetizing. People nice, food not nice. Well, you know what, at least they are praising the team members. I didn't think the food was bad, but again, I just think it's basic and so you, you can do better. Speaking of better, let's go do one of the best things in the park. Let's go to a ride. Oh man, it is busy. Let this video also serve as your friendly reminder that if you're not going to the special event, don't go to the parks on the day of the special event because it's quite busy and the park closes early because of it. But we are headed up this way in the park. So if you're familiar with Universal, you may be able to guess what the best ride is. Could be the Mummy, could be Rip Ride, it could be Transformers, Villain Con, Minions, what do you think? If you guessed that Revenge of the Mummy was the best ride in Universal according to strangers on the internet, 
you're right. Revenge of the Mummy is a part dark ride, part roller coaster, themed to the Brendan Fraser Mummy movies. And what's really cool about the theming of this attraction is that you are going on set to one of those movies. So, especially in the queue, you're going to see half of it looks like a movie set and half of it looks like ancient Egypt. And everybody on the set, except for Brendan Fraser, believes in the curse of Emotep. And he's like, guys, come on, that can't be real. And then you go on the attraction and it turns out it was real. And now the mummy is after you as you go through this dark ride that includes fire, it includes backwards, it includes light effects, practical sets. It is such a cool roller coaster. I absolutely think this is one of, if not the best rides in the park. Revenge of the Mummy has a 48 inch height requirement and it is one of the mini attractions at Universal where you need to put your items in a locker because of the intensity. If you've got a fanny pack, you can wear that as long as it's around your waist. If you've got a lanyard or something, you can wear that. It's not one where you have to go through metal detectors, but bigger backpacks big cameras, loose articles, and things need to go in a locker. Revenge of the Mummy has a 4.55 out of 5, followed by runner-up, you're never going to guess this, Illumination's Villain Con Minion Blast, and then Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. Isn't that wild? I'm, I'm literally flabbergasted at Villain Con because a lot of people were haters, but it turns out if you're not a hater and you just want to jump on a ride that probably doesn't have a long line and shoot some minions... You like it. Revenge of the Mummy is incredibly popular, but it sometimes doesn't get too long of a line. They move people through pretty quickly. I'm going through Express because I do have Express with my annual pass after 4 o'clock. However, there are some really cool Easter eggs and fun interactive moments in the full queue, so if it's not too long, I recommend doing that. I talk more about those in one of our Secrets videos, including a way to scare other guests in the queue. Got my camera back and look at this new i've not seen this it's probably old but just a classic like a nice revenge of the mummy hat anyway whew, been distracted by the cool merchandise in the gift shop that really is such a fun attraction i laugh every time i love the combination of the different ride types because again there are parts that feels like a dark ride and then there's parts where it's a very thrilling coaster it's definitely not the most thrilling coaster here at universal i would probably Tron maybe is as thrilling as I would put it. It's, it's at the top of what would be thrilling at Disney, but it is so, so much fun and it's a beloved IP and it's a huge beam in the Universal community because Brandon Fraser needs to get that cup of coffee. What I am, again, more shocked by is that Villain Con is number two and Gringotts is number three because to me, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts is in battle with Mummy for the best ride in this park because again, you're going to use multiple ride systems. They do use screens there. It is a 3D attraction, but it's also a part dark ride, part simulator, part roller coaster, and it's going through one of the coolest scenes in the Harry Potter series and I think the best cue maybe ever when you go into Gringotts Bank but you know if you're not a diehard Harry Potter person and that line is very very long most of the time I could see where it's not your favorite but that's enough out of me let's go to once again Molly's Review Corner to see what someone said about the mummy fun themed dark coaster with a lot of excitement. The mummy coaster was the highlight of our universal experience. The 4D rides are cool, but a good roller coaster is more up my alley, especially with great theming like Universal and Disney are known for. From fire and fast turns to sudden drops and even thematic acting by the crew, this ride will be one you try again and again. You know what? Couldn't agree more with that. All right, we've got a little bit of time till I need to get to the shows, so I'm going to go do the worst attraction. Any guesses? If you think the internet ranks Fast and the Furious Supercharged as the worst ride in this park, I regret to inform you that you're right. Now, why is this a regret? When you got it right, I'm proud of you, but also, I unapologetically love the Fast and Furious movies and somewhat ironically, quite enjoyed this attraction. And this one didn't just lose. It lost bad. I'm, I'm like sad to say these numbers. Fast and Furious Supercharged had a cumulative rating of 1.6 out of 5. 
The second place worst attraction was Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl, the Dumbo style attraction over in the Simpsons area. And that had a 3.6, a full two points higher than Fast and the Furious. And the third attraction was Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon with a 3.8. Now, for me personally, Jimmy Fallon is my least favorite ride in the park because it makes me incredibly nauseous and I feel like it's a weird niche ride that no one but probably Jimmy Fallon, maybe the roots, asked for. But what do I think is actually the worst ride in the park? Not this one. I think it's probably Kang and Kodos coming from a completely remove the IP out of it. Like that's just a, a spinner attraction. So it has no technology really. It's it's like a, a filler attraction for a lot of people. And I'm not saying it doesn't have its place. It certainly does because you need attractions like that in theme parks for people that can't ride the other attractions that aren't tall enough or they get motion sick. But I'm just saying like, I don't think a spinner style attraction competes with a full scale actual attraction. But um, let's go let's go see the family and, and talk more about that. That after fast and the furious supercharged has a 40 inch height requirement and it is going to put you into a little conflict with once again the family all your favorites are here and so are some of their cars look here's one of dom's chargers right in the flesh and because this is universal that's that's really one of the cars from the movie which is awesome gonna weave our way through oh we got the barbecue going on see isn't this nice at one point in time, that barbecue setting had Corona bottles, because you know... You can have any brew you want, as long as it's a Corona. And uh, it was really actually very sweet because one was poured over, and that was to honor uh, the character Brian O'Connor, who is played by Paul Walker, who really unfortunately did pass away in a motor vehicle accident. So it was a nice gesture for him. Um, but then the Corona bottles disappeared, and, and I think they've come and gone a few times, but they're not there right now. But again, if you like the franchise, you're gonna love this queue because these are a bunch of cars actually used in the Fast movies, driven by Brian, driven by Han, driven by my man Roman Pierce. How can you not love this? I guess if you don't love the movies, that's how. The plot of this attraction is that you are gonna go on a party bus to celebrate Dom, Vin Diesel, Mark Sinclair, whatever you wanna call him, his latest victory in street racing when rut row bad things happen you're gonna rendezvous with tej and mia and then you're supposed to lay low and create a diversion because a bad guy is after you that bad guy you want to know who it is it's owen shaw played by luke evans didn't he die in the franchise who's to say no one really dies in the franchise because even han's back i mean spoiler alert from nine but i think you should have seen nine by now you know who's back from ten should I spoil it? That movie, these movies have been out for a while. If you care enough, you know Giselle's back. You know who else is back? Didn't die, but apparently they butted heads. Dwayne The Rock Johnson's back. He makes a cameo at the very end of 10, and apparently he was paid a million dollars for it. So that's nuts. Anyway, these movies are ridiculous, and so is this ride, and that's why I like it. But as ridiculous as the ride itself is, my favorite part is the part we're gonna go to first, which are the pre-shows, where you've got real life team members acting as different characters, and they are so funny, and it is like my dream job if I were to work at Universal. I know you think it would be to go work in Hogwarts, but I think it's actually to work here. I legit love all the Easter eggs in this queue. If you're a Fast and the Furious fan, like, look, we're gonna hit the Nas, y'all. Watch that Secrets video if you like that kind of stuff, because there's a bunch. All right, Pat, yeah. let's get these people on their way. Send them over to the war room. You got it, boss. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. My name is Jamie. Jamie, yeah. the buses are here. Absolutely ludicrous, yes, pun intended, attraction. I love it so much. For starters, 
speaking of Ludacris, I love the fact that he just uses his own song lyrics to speak when he's like, we're about to roll out and roll out hard. Oh, genius. Poetic cinema. I love when Dom, like, jumps on a small helicopter and flies it, and then Letty takes the wheel, and then he, like, slides in. It's amazing. I have fully embraced how ridiculous that attraction is, but, 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 I can fully understand why you wouldn't like this attraction. One, if you waited a long time for it and you thought it was like a roller coaster or something, and it turns out to be a big bus simulator style attraction, I could see where you're not thrilled. If you don't care about the Fast and the Furious, you might be like, what is going on? But also, if it's a ride themed to Fast and the Furious and you know what those movies are like, even just in concept, you kind of know this movie, this ride's gonna be ridiculous, right? So, no. I don't think this is the worst ride in the park. That's not just because of my affinity for the franchise. I think the technology where they are in the party is actually very cool, and it's the predecessor to the technology that we're gonna see in a little bit at a st Almost spoiled where we're going soon. Forget I said that, and uh, we'll get back to that later, but I think the technology is pretty cool, but please. Don't take me saying I like it as a fan of the franchise and as someone who embraces how absolutely bonkers town this ride is. Please do not take this as me saying it's a must ride that you need to wait a long line for. I would never tell you to wait more than like maybe 15 minutes for that attraction and once you've done everything else that you have on your list. I personally think that the worst ride in the park is Kang and Kodos just because it's a, a simple spinner filler attraction. So like objectively speaking, it's the least impressive in my opinion. But let's go to the reviews. It isn't fast but it left me furious. The production is so high, but the ride, just the lowest of low. I think they're talking about the queue, which fair. If the line is less than five minutes, try it out. Anything more than five, keep walking. You know what? That is a nice-ish review. I like the pun. And I, I appreciate that that person, whilst giving it one star, recommends the queue and, uh, that's great. And I also am very hopeful about the new Fast and Furious roller coaster under construction at Universal Hollywood, which looks amazing. It looks like it's gonna be like, you might actually get to drift. It's kind of on the side of a cliff over there. So I'm hoping that will be the justice for the franchise that we deserve. The ride's done. We've got two shows and good food waiting. There's not a ton of shows in this park. What I qualify as a show for these videos is anything in like, a theater where you're actually sitting down or like a nighttime spectacular. So streetmosphere is not counted for these videos just because most of those are not even on review websites. Things like the Beat Builders, the Blues Brothers, the uh, shows in Wizarding World, Celestina, and the Tales of Beetle the Bard, and the ones that are get like two reviews, which doesn't feel actually valid, you know what I mean? Which means there's just three theater shows at this park. Animal Actors on Location, the horror makeup show, and the Born Stuntacular. They're all on this side of the park. I could be going anywhere. We are in fact headed to Animal Actors on Location, a about a 20 or so minute show with real animals, many of which have been in real TV shows and movies to talk about using animals in film and television. And what's really great about this y'all, a lot of the animals are rescues, which is so cute. And as someone who loves learning a little bit of movie magic, it's really fun to watch. But do you think this was the best or the worst? The trainer is patience and persistence. We're gonna show you guys how we train birds from these guys. I need the help of the baby gold volunteers. Come on. Do it. Oh, oh, now you do it. Come here. Okay, back up. Nice way to go. show, right? My favorite part is when they show how they do the birds. Even though I don't love birds, I love the, the wind machine that makes a bird basically like fly still so that you can capture a bird flying sequence. I love the dog part. There's a pig. So what if I told you this is the worst show in this park? Well, that's what the internet thinks anyway. And let me be clear, all of the shows, remember there's only three, have a four or higher. 
So they're all good. It's just there's not a ton of them. So, you know, by the made up rules of this video, it's the worst. So it's the worst with a 4.2. So still obviously a very good rating. I'm not gonna tell you what number two is because that would give away what the best show is. So let's go to the review corner. If you are wandering the parks and the lines are long, it's always good to take in a show. Animal Actors is a slightly corny but cute animal actor show. It's about 30 minutes and showcases all types of animals, dogs, cats, ferrets, hawks, and among other things. They do switch it up a bit from time to time so the show's not always exactly the same, although they do seem to follow a general guideline, three stars. You know what, I gotta agree with that. I don't think this is a must-do show, but if you're looking for something to sit down and enjoy as a family in between some of those heavy hitters, I enjoy it. I enjoy it every time I go. And it's usually pretty easy to get a seat. I walked in like two minutes before and I had plenty of spots, even on this very busy day. All that said, some of the Streetmosphere entertainment that again, doesn't qualify for this video is my favorite and I prefer it over that show. Things like the shows in Diagon Alley. I love the Bee Builders. I love the Blues Brothers. In fact, I did a video once where I did all of the live entertainment in this park in one day. And there's a lot more than you might think. So if you're interested in seeing some of the other entertainment, go check that out. But I'm truly such a big fan of performers and uh, live entertainment and theme parks. It's one of my favorite things is just to grab a drink or a snack and enjoy some performances. I think that's what makes theme parks really special a lot of the time. All right, I got 20 minutes till our next show. Hoping that's enough time to grab my food, which ranked as the best food in the park. Oh, and for food, I just wanna make it known, I didn't count things that you couldn't get like a meal at. So, Florida Ford Excuse Ice Cream Parlor doesn't count, for example. And here we are, we've made it. Central Park crepes. And I know you're like, Molly, you just said snack stands don't count, crepes are dessert. But here, they actually have sweet and savory crepes. And in my experience, the savory crepe is more than enough to be a meal for one person. Central Park crepes has a rating of a 4.6. The runners up being Lisa's Treehouse of Horrors, the healthy-ish part of Fast Food Boulevard in the Simpsons area with a four, shocking, and Finnegan's with a 3.95, which is the pub and restaurant, Irish pub and restaurant over uh, in the New York area. As you can see here, the savory option right now, this one's usually on tap, is a smoked brisket, so I just ordered that. They, of course, have sweet crepes as well. The strawberry hazelnut is a classic. They've got a vegan berry as well, and then they usually do a seasonal. It's still the holiday cookie butter, but I'm here like a week or so before Mardi Gras kicks off, so maybe they'll bring back the muffalata that they had last year, and they're all made to order. Look, it's happening right now. That is, that's my crepe. He's making it right now. So it does take a few moments, but worth it for fresh crepes. So here it is, my hot, fresh crepe. This is a smoked brisket crepe. Again, freshly made. It's got spiced rub beef, pepper jack cheese, coleslaw, and a golden ranch barbecue sauce on top. Y'all, it smells incredible. There's a nice, plentiful seating area right across from the crepe stand. And I'm excited to dig in. Yum. I haven't actually had one of these in a long time. When they first opened, they had this one that was like chicken with goat cheese and mushrooms and arugula, and I was obsessed with it because I love all those things. So I'm excited. I'm sad they got rid of that one, but I love seeing the different seasonal ones. I don't also really know how to eat this, so we're just... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for me to show you what it looks like on the inside without being like weird but there's the beef. There's a lot of beef. I love the crunch from the coleslaw. I wish there was a little bit more of the coleslaw flavor. The barbecue ranch is delicious. It's warm, it's different. I'm just destroying it now. I don't mean to, but I want the meat. It's, I've, I've now got it on napkins and I'm gonna eat it with a fork, which they do have, because I think that'll be easier to get everything like spread out. But I, I feel like it doesn't look appealing, so I don't wanna show it because I don't wanna disparage the good name of Central Park Crimps. But I think this is delicious. I think this is unique. I think it's pretty filling. I think it is definitely different than like a burger or chicken tenders or something you're gonna get a lot of places. My only fault with it really is there's not a lot of options. So if you don't like brisket, that's your only savory option right now. I hope that when they bring a new seasonal, it's another savory. Cause for me, I prefer savory to sweet. Um, but I think, again, I, I think this is a great option. Do I think it's the best restaurant in the park? I think it's hard to find fault in this restaurant. If, if you like the food, obviously if you don't like brisket, you're gonna keep on walking. I personally, just for mostly theming, um, prefer the Leaky Cauldron because I like the fish and chips. I think they're fantastic. And of course, being a potter nerd, I love being inside the Leaky Cauldron. So I think that to me is my favorite. I also really like Today Cafe, which is up at the front of the park. And they do a little bit lighter options, like really good sandwiches. I love they have a 
grilled cheese that's got apple slices on it. They do some really nice salads, coffees. So if you're looking for something a little bit lighter but not skimping on flavor or uniqueness, I enjoy Today Cafe. But I think this is good. I, I'm not mad that this is number one. I'm shocked that Lisa's Treehouse of Horrors is on the podium. But enough out of me. We got another show to catch, so let's get to Molly's Review Corner. Yummy crepes all the time. Could you say yummy in my tongue? They have sweet and savory and even a seasonal crepe, so you'll be, need to stop by to see what you want. I always eat a savory crepe. It's very filling and a lot for the amount you pay. You will enjoy this as a quick bite to eat and you won't have to spend a lot. You know what, I agree with this reviewer and I'm gonna echo them in saying the price point is a lot better. $12 crepe, $20 burger. This is the winner. Crepe consumed and here I stand between the final two shows. Which one's on the top? Universal's Horror Makeup Show, an opening day classic, or the newest show in the park, The Born Stuntacular. And the winner is The Born Stuntacular. Surprised? Me too, a little bit. But kind of also no. The Born Stuntacular is about a 20, 30 minute stunt show theme to, you guessed it, the Born series, the Jason Born series starring Matt Damon. And what's really cool about the show, a couple things. Number one, when you walk through the queue, there's gonna be real props from the movies, which if you're a fan of, that's exciting. I always like seeing real props from movies and, and uh, TV. Number two, they have used some really cool technology to make the show happen. The stunt show itself is a combination of live action actors and performers and stunt performers and screens based on the screen technology from Fast and the Furious Supercharged. So if anybody here is like, I love the stunts and how amazing was the technology of Bourne, you can go thank the family for that. But it is so cool and it's admittedly better. It's the newer iteration of the technology from Fast and the Furious to the point where in the opening scene, your Jason Bourne character is handed a knife from someone in the crowd. And I literally don't know how that knife got there because I can't tell where the real people end and the fake people begin. It's really, really cool. There's also some really cool uses of stunts. Like they had some, like at one point, the stunt actor like moves his body in slow-mo to make it seem like it's a slow-mo movie shot. But like, no, he's just strong and, and doing that. Now, you can't film inside the Stuntacular, but um, whenever you see the footage, that is from Universal's website and YouTube where you can get footage, obviously. So let's, let's look at it. Wasn't that amazing? <laughs> anyway, I do really like the show. I think it's really cool. Every time I see it, I'm very impressed with the technology, with the acting. It's a little bit long for me in a few points. I feel like they could tighten it up and move it forward a little bit. But the good things about the show, I don't think it matters if you care about Jason Bourne. If you want to see cool stunts and how they're made, you're going to like this show. It does not matter at all if you've seen those movies or not, because spoiler alert, that's not actually Matt Damon. But it's just like a nice bonus if you have. I think the technology is very impressive. I think it's probably more impressive than Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular if you're going in completely no nostalgia, no tie to IP. So I, I think that's fine to be on top. I personally do like Horror Makeup Show better. I think Horror Makeup Show is funny. I like the campiness of it. I am obsessed with the lobby of Horror Makeup Show where they've got real props from films, including Jaws, Jurassic Park, Chucky, Psycho, original Universal Monster stuff. I think that one is way cooler in the lobby aspect. And I think that I get a kick out of the show every time I watch it, I'm very entertained. I'm much more likely to walk into Horror Makeup Show on a regular basis than I am born. But I do think some of that is probably nostalgia. It's maybe a little bit too campy for some people and maybe not everybody likes horror movies. All that said, it was very, very close. Horror Makeup Show had a 4.4 and Born had a 4.45. So neck and neck. And uh, I think they're both good shows and good filler in between some of these heavy hitter attractions. 
But let's take it one last time to Molly's Review Corner. No lie, but this has to be the coolest stunt show I've ever seen. I don't know why stunts is in quotes. It is a stunt show. It's a combination of on-screen scenes mixed with IRL live action. The effects are out of this world and my mind was completely blown. It's something you need to see for yourself. I sat in the middle near the back of the auditorium. The next time I will sit a few rows closer. I think it's probably a good view from any seat. Fair point. Also, I think he was making a stuntacular joke by quoting stunt. So well done, reviewer. And I agree. <laughs> Well, friends, that is a wrap on the best and worst here at Universal Studios Florida, as told by strangers on the internet. I gotta say, I'm not as shocked in this one as I have been in some of the other ones. I think the runners-up surprised me in multiple cases more than the actual uh, winners in, in either best or worst category. So I'm excited to hear what you think down in the comments. Which park should we do this next in? A lot of fun to do these videos. I always get a kick out of the reviews, so can't wait for the next one. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with the Man Fam at Discord, and until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been so magical. Bye.